So for each of the lenses we tested, we tested transverse spherical aberration and longitudinal spherical aberration. Uh, for the transverse aberration, what we did is we changed the position on, of the beam on the Hartman mask by translating the mirror, and then we translated the, uh, the microscope objective orthogonal to the beam axis. For the longitudinal aberration, we did the same effect, and we brought the, the beam position on the Hartman mask towards the center as we adjusted the Z axial position of the microscope to determine the best approximate location of the paraxial focus. Both of these can be used to determine the wavefront error coefficient. So as we move the laser across the different holes in the Hartman mask, we see that the beam moves in one direction and then stops and moves back in the direction that it came from. This corresponds to the beam crossing the peak at the marginal focus. So here's our setup for testing the spherical aberration of lenses based on their shape factor. Uh, one thing, what we were going to do is determine the marginal focus by adjusting from one extreme to the other on this Hartman mask by translating this mirror here. And the problem that we saw was that First of all, our extent in one direction was only to the second hole over. And second of all, uh, when we translate, we find that even though the microscope focus should be in the same position to represent the marginal focus, it's not. And we think that could be either because of the position of the Hartman mask being not close enough to the lens, the center of the Hartman mask not corresponding to the center of the lens, or most likely the axis of translation of this stage is not exactly perpendicular to the optical axis here. Here we have these slits represent a Hartman mask, and each of these rays passing through represent the different paths that the light can follow. Where the light crosses the optical axis is where we get our marginal focus, praxial focus, and in the middle we get minimum blur. The distance between the praxial focus and the marginal focus um, can give us the defocus to get from one to the other. Um, here we have a plot for the praxial focus of the ray error dependent on pupil position. And when we defocus it, we can get the marginal focus, which gives us less ray error. And if we move it to the position of best focus, we'll get even less ray error. And that's all done by defocusing the lens. Now the equation for spherical aberration is this big equation here. But the most important part is the shape factor and the conjugate factor, which depends on how the lens is shaped and where the object and image locations are. Here we have the, a graph for longitudinal aberration, which gives us the um, error in the z direction depends on the pupil position. As we increase the pupil position, the error in the z direction increases negatively. An important part of this was choosing the right microscope objective NA. The important part was that the NA of the microscope objective is greater than the lens. That way we can underfill the microscope objective and sample the whole lens. Shape factor varies between negative 1 and 1 depending on the radius of curvature of the first and second surfaces. And conjugate factor also varies between negative 1 and 1, depending on the object and image locations. Spherical aberration is dependent on both conjugate and shape factor. So if we know one of them, we can optimize the other to get the lowest amount of spherical aberration. Here you can see our test setup for determining the aberration in the lenses that we tested. It includes an aligned Heaney laser, which is reflected off of a, a fold mirror on the translation stage, which directs the light through a Hartman mask this allows us to select a pupil location through the test lens to determine the marginal focus, which we can then use to determine the spherical aberration present in the lens and plot that. The microscope was the mechanism for determining the location of these foci. For transverse aberration, we used an orthogonal translation, and for longitudinal aberration, we used an axial motion. Here we have the transverse ray error plots for the three different shape factors we tested. If we were exactly at marginal focus, the ray error at the edges of the pupil would be zero. Here we can see from the plots that we are further away from the lens than marginal focus is. In these plots, the shape factor of b equals zero with the biconvex lens yielded the least aberrations. However, the plots for b equals plus and minus one look surprisingly similar. We expected that b equals one would have the least spherical aberrations and therefore show a linear slope since defocus would dominate. We suspect that we accidentally unflipped the lens between the two measurements, so we actually measured the same thing twice. From our longitudinal ray error plot, we found that delta Z is 5.9 millimeters, which is pretty close to the value of 5.75 millimeters that we found using Zmax. Now, it's not as parabolic as we would have hoped, partly because that zero point is very difficult to measure. Using code 5, we found that for this setup, with a shape factor of B equals minus 1 had the most error, most spherical aberration. With B equals positive 1, we had less aberration, and with B equals 0 for a biconvex lens, we had the least amount of aberration. For a conjugate factor of c equals minus 1, our theory states that the uh, shape factor of b equals 1 should be ideal, but Zmax shows that a shape factor of b equals 0 is ideal. When adjusting the position on the Hartman mask, the laser is very bright and saturates your eyes, which makes it difficult to see the exact position. By using a linear polarizer, 
we can adjust the brightness, making it much easier to position the laser on the Hartman mask.